Enjoy 1% merchant commission when you accept Lanka Pay cards. Contact these banks today. Welcome to Times Online Interviews. Today we have Mr. Mahendra Jayasekara, Managing Director of Lanka Tiles PLC. Welcome Mr. Jayasekara and welcome. Good morning, good um, to start off with, um, could you explain about the industry of the tile market as it stands now? Yeah, actually the tile industry in the last few months has dropped a lot. In fact, uh, what happened was basically uh, before the, uh, the corona pandemic, the yes. total tile market was about 28 to 30 million uh, square meters a year. And the local manufacturers were supplying three local manufacturers, that is uh, Rosel, Lanka Tiles and Mac Tiles, mm -hmm. we, were ma we were supplying about 18 million square meters. 10 million was imported, but with the, the import ban, then that 10 million went off, but there was a pent up demand, as you know, then we were able to sell our production. Actually, before the pandemic, uh, you know uh, very well that we were building up stocks also because of the, 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 the low price imports coming into the market. Mm -hmm. So. Now what has happened is basically we have finished our stocks, mm -hmm. uh, we are running our factories at capacity but now in the last 3-4 months we are suddenly realizing that we can't sell our capacity. Mm -hmm. So the tile market today mm -hmm. in my uh, belief is down to about 18 million square meters, mm -hmm. maybe even less, maybe 16 to 18 million square meters is the total tile market mm -hmm. and that's a drop mind you from about 28 to 30 million. Mm -hmm. So, the market has shrunk a lot and the industry is not doing well. What are your reasons for this? What are the reasons for this? No, actually, uh, reasons are all well known. I mean, the high interest rates environment is also hurting the, the industry. Construction industry has come to a near standstill. Mm -hmm. Actually, construction is not moving at all mm -hmm. uh, with this tax hikes, uh, that, uh, tax hikes uh, yes. that will come into effect uh, from uh, January onward. Mm -hmm. So. Overall, all in all, uh, construction industry is not moving yeah. and actually what is worse is that housing construction, not big constructions, mm. but even house construction, home constructions also has come to a near standstill. Actually, uh, whenever we go and visit uh, outstations to see how the construction activity is taking place, so things are not looking good. So virtually at a standstill. Uh, but when you look at the market uh, from 2015 to 2017, we saw a lot of unbranded tiles in the market, especially from China. And with the import restrictions, these imports stopped. Then we saw massive demand from your sector, from other companies. Now, are you forecasting these type of import restrictions in the future as well? See, actually, uh, my forecast is the government will find it extremely difficult to open up this industry uh, to imports uh, because uh, uh, because there is sheer foreign currency liquidity shortage in the market. So even if you open up, people are not going to have foreign currency to import products. Mm -hmm. But that we are for liberalizing the market because mm -hmm. we can't grow unless the industry grows. Mm -hmm. So there should be liberalization. But I expect. This uh, import ban will last uh, for a while because uh, the government does not have, I mean as a country, mm -hmm. we don't have foreign currency uh, to afford the imports. Uh, obviously you will have certain amount of demand. If so, what are you doing about your capacity limitations? Are you expanding the capacity? See, at the moment, industry doesn't have capacity limitations, uh, okay. Durutu, because mm -hmm. uh, what happened was when, when, when the demand was high, as I said earlier, when we saw this pent up demand and mm. when we were selling our entire capacity, mm -hmm. the government came and made a promise, not only to us, even to Centrivia manufacturers. Mm -hmm. They said increase capacity, we will protect the industry. So as a result, uh, lots of people actually took that word mm -hmm. and invested money. We also invested money. Mm -hmm. We are also on an expansion drive. Our Lanka Voltile factory in Mipe mm -hmm. uh, is investing about 6 billion rupees, 6,000 square meters a day will mm -hmm. uh, get added to our capacity effective July, August. Mm -hmm. So, I am not really sure what we are going to do with that uh, expanded mm -hmm. capacity because as it is we can't sell our production. Mm -hmm. For the last four months, mm -hmm. we have not been able to sell our production and the stocks are building up. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I think the industry is uh, heading to a crisis also with mm -hmm. or without uh, imports, mm -hmm. industry is heading to a crisis because 
uh, as you know i think uh, uh, other companies are also having the same issues because mm -hmm. they can't sell capacity uh, stock uh, build up is taking place in the industry so i'm not really sure which regime or which government told you to increase capacity but it also brings us to this policy question you know consistent policy which you have been advocating for a long time uh, could you expand on that no actually uh, see uh, when the corona uh, pandemic came yes. of course there was this import ban and then what happened was basically after a long shutdown the company uh, the country opened up mm -hmm. and then people were finishing they are uh, already started construction work and there, therefore there was a, a big demand for tiles and everywhere, all construction material mm -hmm. at that time uh, the government met the industry players and told the industry look you expand capacity there will be protection mm -hmm. uh, because we will not be able to open up uh, the industry for imports for a considerable period of time and as a result what happened was certain manufacturers uh, uh, spent money on expansion mm -hmm. so what happens is basically i have always said this the policies are inconsistent because what the government uh, saying today is not what the government doing tomorrow really so that is a serious question we yeah, have absolutely. because industry wide not only uh, for ceramic industry even mm -hmm. other industries are facing the same issue mm -hmm. uh, because the government doesn't keep the word real when 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 what what we have to understand is when the government gives a word in a crisis situation look you put money we will protect you then the companies will put money uh, invest money yeah. but uh, when that protection is taken off on and uh, on and off then uh, all the players get into a trouble classic example is Centuria manufacturer, government very specifically told the Centuria manufacturers to invest money, expand capacity, try to be self-sufficient in Centuria. Mm -hmm. So almost all players, people who had closed down operations also uh, resumed operations. Mm -hmm. They invested money, they expanded capacity. Then what happened was after a few months, uh, recently, the government uh, lifted the ban. Mm -hmm. And lots of uh, imports started coming in. and. Uh, local manufacturers are struggling to sell uh, capacity and uh, they were forced to, to curtail production. Some people have shut down operations also. Mm -hmm. But then again, uh, the government is talking of a uh, ban. Mm -hmm. So, uh, how these policy decisions are taken, who is taking these decisions, at whose uh, behest these decisions are taken, we are at a loss to understand really. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I always say this, consistent bad policies are better than inconsistent good policies industry uh, that is what we have to understand that's what the government also should understand the policy mm -hmm. makers should understand mm -hmm. if we have even bad but consistent policies we know how to deal with that policy mm -hmm. but you tell one thing today and uh, tell something tomorrow we don't know how to do business also mr jayasekara the tires industry is a very import dependent sector will you be expanding into exports or will you be increasing your exports Yes, we are going to focus on exports because we have no other choice, uh, Durutu. Because uh, as I said, uh, we cannot sell our uh, entire production in the local market mm -hmm. and uh, we have no choice but to, to export. But mm -hmm. exporting in a hurry is also not a feasible option because, you know, uh, developing a customer might take about six, seven years sometimes. Mm -hmm. But our export percentage had dropped because mm -hmm. when the local demand was high, mm -hmm. uh, we were selling uh, more production in, our, in the local market. Mm -hmm. But uh, what we are trying to do is to increase exports mainly to USA and Australia and we are mm -hmm. looking at other markets also mm -hmm. like uh, uh, European countries. Mm -hmm. But certainly we want to impo uh, improve or uh, expand our uh, export footprint mm -hmm. because uh, as you know what we did was basically uh, we set up a mosaic tile factory or, or, or a unit to, mm -hmm. to produce mosaic tiles and and mm -hmm. also small trim tiles, special mm -hmm. pieces, mm -hmm. uh, which are in demand, especially in the uh, American market. Mm -hmm. So that is where our focus is right now, mm -hmm. because all other markets are also not doing well, even the American market is not doing mm -hmm. uh, quite well, but mm -hmm. we have a niche uh, market there for those products. Okay. So we definitely want to, to improve our exports. Without improving exports or increasing exports, we will not be able to survive. Currently, your exports are about 5 to 6 percent. What percentage will you be expanding your exports by? Actually, within the next two years, I want to take it up to at least about 15, 20 percent. That is the target. 
Okay. Because what we cannot sell in the local market, we have to export. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, we will have to, to uh, stop the factory mm -hmm. again. But Mr. Jayasekara, globally also there is a recession and with the interest rate hikes, will you be still looking at uh, ex aggressive expansion into exports? See, that's why actually we have to, to select uh, the product mm -hmm. properly because I mean in a mass market we can't uh, increase exports because mm -hmm. uh, uh, that's why I said we, we went into this mosaic tile uh, production. It was joint venture with a, with a Chinese uh, and an American partner, mm -hmm. so two partners. So we identified this product which is uh, not in heavy production in the world mm -hmm. and US uh, slapped anti-dumping duties on Chinese imports. I think 2018, 2018 August, they slept uh, anti-dumping duties on 2,000 products and one, one was this mosaic dye. Mm -hmm. So, we quickly selected that product to be manufactured here and we started production and now we are exporting. So, mm -hmm. that is giving us some leeway because we, we converted some of our regular uh, products also to mosaic tiles and that is how we shifted our, our capacity mm -hmm. uh, in favor of a product that can be exported. Mm -hmm. So, we have to, to properly choose what we can export and what we cannot uh, export. Mm -hmm. So, and concentrate on export uh, markets and, and build export. We are an import dependent mm -hmm. industry mm -hmm. because if you take, now lots of people do not understand, this. people are talking about this high price of tiles and tile prices have gone up unreasonably. What I want to say is if you take a tile Durutu, if the, the tile uh, weight of that tile is say supposing 10 kilograms, 9.9 .9 kilograms is local. If you take the weight, right, mm -hmm. only 0.1 percent is or 100 grams is important, mm -hmm. which is the glaze material and other chemicals. But if you take a cost of a tile, cost of production of a tile, 70 percent is important, mm -hmm. only 30 percent is local. Mm -hmm. That 9.9 .9 kilograms account for only 30 percent of the cost. That 100 uh, grams mm -hmm. account for 70 percent of the cost. Mm -hmm. So, that, that is the, the dynamic and uh, we are heavily import uh, dependent and we have to have foreign currency mm -hmm. to import mm -hmm. and that also actually foreign currency shortage uh, uh, about 6 months ago mm -hmm. uh, hurt our financials very heavily because we were buying foreign currency uh, at, at uh, much higher rates mm -hmm. than the, the bank stipulated rates. Um, Mr. Jayasekara, you are a 100 percent import uh, dependent industry. Um, have you faced any restrictions on uh, importing your raw materials with the import restrictions that the government had imposed? Raw material import restrictions to be fair by everybody, my answer is no. Uh, why I am saying that is, yes, we had hiccups, but yeah. uh, but those are uh, those were manageable, mm -hmm. and I should say that uh, we didn't have major issues mm -hmm. in in importing due to policy mm -hmm. decisions. Mm -hmm. No, but foreign currency shortages, yes, we had major issues. But the problem will be the impending electricity tariff hikes from next year, isn't it? Yes, yes, yes because actually. Our electricity bill has gone up 100 uh, percent uh, with the last electricity hike and uh, that uh, actually our, our total electricity bill for a month is about 25 million rupees mm -hmm. and now our forecast is it will go up again uh, to about 100 uh, million, 90 to 100 million because the government is talking of, uh, of uh, doubling electricity right? How will you be facing this or countering this? See, it is very difficult to counter this uh, because finally what we have to understand is customer pays, mm -hmm. we have to pass it down, but there is a limit to which we can pass down cost uh, because you know obviously tile prices are high and uh, that has dented demand. Mm -hmm. So, any increase we will not be able to, to pass down in its entirety, mm -hmm. but we will have to pass down in some way. Uh, so, what will happen is if we can't pass down, say if we do pass down, mm -hmm. if the prices go up and if the demand slumps again, mm -hmm. then we will have to reverse it really. So, that will hurt the company and uh, so the businesses will suffer. Mm -hmm. We, it is very difficult to counter it really. Mm -hmm. We can only respond to it. Yes. Um, Mr. Jayasekara, are you looking at diversifying your product portfolio or have setting up different companies? Yeah, and anyway we have diversified to a certain extent because through Swiss Exilon we are into uh, ancillary products, then uh, Swiss Tech Aluminium is into to aluminium extrusions and all that. 
and we are looking at other industries also. Yes, we need to diversify because mm -hmm. ceramic industry, as I said, is uh, is at the receiving end mm -hmm. because you know our policies are inconsistent and uh, we can't really forecast uh, you know how to respond to the challenges that we will be facing in the future. Mm -hmm. So the only way to uh, to survive is through diversification. Mm -hmm. So we have to diversify. Actually, even as we speak, we are looking at certain investments. Uh, uh, that will increase our uh, product portfolio. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but there are also we have to be very careful right now because uh, with this uh, high interest rate environment mm -hmm. and and increase in taxes, we have to see what compet what uh, industries are competitive, mm -hmm. what product ranges we can add to our products, and mm -hmm. and also what what products we may have to even discontinue mm -hmm. because uh, we, we have to take very careful uh, decisions in this uh, current environment because. The environment is so volatile. What about expansions into other markets or other countries, say joint ventures, etc.? We have. Actually, uh, uh, before the, the import ban came, uh, Durutu, we were uh, having a very good and a heavy presence in India. Mm -hmm. We were uh, running about seven tile uh, manufacturing lines and we were importing also in a big way. Mm. Uh, 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 to tell you, in 2018, we imported 1,500 containers of tiles uh, to Sri Lanka and the Lanka Tiles brand. Mm -hmm. So our next step would be mm -hmm. to set up operations overseas because, uh, you know, as I said, when, when you deal with the inconsistent policy framework, we have no choice but to go and set up uh, operations elsewhere where there is certain amount of consistency in policy making really. And that is the only way we can expand operations also because mm -hmm. if you take the 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 the, uh, the country situation and the policy framework we have, mm -hmm. uh, the, that f framework does not allow companies to grow. It does not allow private enterprise uh, a private enterprises to grow. And that is actually when we do that, we are doing a great injustice to our employees also because we have to. We, they can't see a future for them, but we have to show them a future mm -hmm. by showing operations elsewhere. Um, going moving forward, what are the other things that you expect next year shall bring to your industry? See, to our industry, uh, what what we have to have is what we are praying for mm -hmm. is basically uh, that the country will you know at least start limping towards normalcy. Yes. We we can't expect a sudden return of normalcy in this country. But actually, uh, uh, that return to normalcy is not going to just happen. And we have to make it happen, uh, mm -hmm. Durutu. Mm -hmm. So that normalcy we have to bring. I think all of us, the corporates and as citizens also, we have that responsibility to, to bring that normalcy. And to bring that normalcy, there is one condition that we need to satisfy. We have to demand accountability from the, the government. Mm -hmm. Without accountability, this return to normalcy is not going to, to happen in a hurry. Mm -hmm. Actually, if you want to quicken this process, accountability has to be established. The government should demonstrate accountability. Then only people will have confidence in the country, confidence in the economy. Actually, I don't want to, I don't wish to, you know, ask for anything from the government to protect this industry. But we need to protect uh, the, the Sri Lankan economy. We need to protect the country. So, for that, I think what we are expecting, the new year to bring, is this great sense of accountability. Thank you very much, Mr. Jayasekar, on that insightful explanation into the industry and your company. And let's hope that next year will bring much needed accountability into this country. Thank you very much. Thank you.